Okay, so welcome to the walk around video of this fucking car. This is, uh, should we, what do you think? How your mic is with this wind? It's, it's got an anti wind thing. We'll start from front to back because I think suspension for a drift car is really uh, the main point, right? So, I'll do a bit of flexing. Our oh, steering? No. So, uh, front suspension. We have, uh, if you look through the wheel in there, so that's some 50, uh, these ones, yeah, that's the yellow thing. Boom. So that's 50 mil Wizard of Lock uh, CNC arm, E90 inner tie rods, E36 outer tie rods, HSD, Monopro, uh, no, not Monopro, Dual Tech. We also have a Wizard of Lock cut hub, no ABS and no front anti roll bar, stock subframe, all that, obviously. So that's the front suspension. Rear suspension, of course, HSD Dual Tech, the same thing, but they're the sort of normal spring rate you would get with the Dual Techs. What? I don't know, whatever. I don't run the, the spring adjusters, the perch things. I don't run that. So this is the fitment I have. Boom. So next thing. Yeah, so wanted to show as well, suspension wise, it's very important in the rear for a coupe for you to grab one of these um, sort of strut braces. The more solid and sick it looks, the better because, you know, it's good to protect the rear shock towers. The coupes like to blow through them. Don't know why BMW just fucked up on the design there. So strut brace or like those BMW sells them or maybe I don't even know. They're like reinforcement plates for the rear shock tower. If you have a coupe and you drift it, very important. Just sort that out because I remember on my first coupe it was all fucked up. 316i, very important. Uh, so next wheels. We were gonna do wheels. Boom. So rear wheels. Uh, well, I have matching uh, front and rear because apparently I do that now. All right, so yeah, we'll go wheel sizes next. It's important. We'll start with the front, I think, with a 50 mil arm or a 30 mil like E46 arm. I would say, yeah, really, you don't want to be pushing it. I run AJ in the front. I know friends who run 9Js in the front. Um, I don't know, because I'm stock body, this is the point, is I'm trying to stay stock body because I think it's cooler. Stock body, 50 mil arms, AJ at, um, I think it's exactly ET20 final offset. No, ET15 because the wheels are 35. Well, we can crouch and you can film me anyway because it's the wheel, right? So yeah. these are 17 by 8 ET35 uh, Advan SA3R, and then we obviously have the Jap adapters because this is a BMW and that's a Jap wheel. 5 by 120 to 5 by 114.3. 20 mil adapters means the final offset is ET15, AJ, 50 mil arms, uh, cut hubs, United tie rods. That's my stock body fitment setup. The tires I run on the front at the moment are Toyo R888. There's some second hand ones I found on Marketplace for 100 quid in my size. They've been working fine. Obviously, toe and camber fucks up the inside of the tire, so I need to flip them soon. But they're doing all right. In the wet, in the dry, they're calm. Some people have said they're kind of shit, but they're all right. I'm driving them. They're fine. Same thing, Advan SA3R. These are 17 by 9 ET38 from factory. Uh, from factory, like standard. And then with the 20 North Spacer, takes them to ET18. So essentially, 9J at ET18. With stock body. And obviously, we have rolled arches. Like, if you look, this is my professional job here. Um, I used a I think I just used my uh, wheel key man the plus thing that you get from Harford's I just use the wheel as leverage and just bend the archer out fuck it visually this car is like a bit of a fucking scrap heap right now because I just haven't had the opportunity to make it nice you know but it's all right so wheels and tires oh yeah I didn't say the, the tire size in the front 205 40 17 in the front 215 40 17 in the rear uh, right that's what I run. Yeah. I know what I run. Um, 215's put down pretty good grip actually on stock suspension and stock power because we'll get onto power now actually. It's a good segue. Oh, yeah, you got an E36 with an E36 engine. Oh my God, so smart. Now, this is not even that bad actually. I thought it would have been oilier and more filthy, but it's not even bad. Clean. So this is a M52 V28 um, stock manifold, remapped ECU. Uh, up uh, red line is at seven grand, which 
and I don't know if the Vanos has been actually remapped, so anyway, I have this NASCAR air filter, this trash truck brace, everything's coated in oil because this thing likes to spit oil everywhere. Because of 316, we've got the fucking battery in the front here, catch can, beer can, very nice, but yeah, so it's a 96 uh, 28, which means it has the 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 metal catch can whatever i think it's the nickel block but i don't think it is because if it was i would have blown it up already <laughs> so or maybe it's like a really good condition nickel block that i'm blowing up in the process i don't know whatever it's a 2a it was 500 quid i had an m50 b25 in here before and i blew through the piston uh on cylinder five so i was like what's the next cheapest thing this came up with 500 quid when i was looking chucked it in there no problem i have stock rad stock fan just everything is stock because that way if something breaks just get a replacement part from your local car parts store or from someone breaking one yeah it's not hard you don't have to do any custom fab if the engine blows up yank it out put a new one in there simple all right just simple just easy to like good suspension simple engine setup simple drivetrain so next thing in the drivetrain i have a stock get rag box so not even a zf literally stock gearbox five speed I said about the map DCU, then we go to stock prop shaft, stock diff, it's a, well, 3.15 uh, ratio, medium case diff, which came in the, in the UK, it came in the 3 litre M3s, and it also came in the 325i, I don't think anything else, um, so the reason that I have that is because I actually bought a whole 325i donor car, you lot can actually watch the build series for this car, in the little corner up here is going to come up like a little flashcard if I'm going to edit like that. So that's why I have a 315, it's welded. Uh, I feel like, fingers crossed, I don't want to jinx myself, but I feel like this 315 diff is going to be the next thing that goes in the drivetrain because I blew up the engine, I blew up the gearbox. Next thing left from that 325 donor is the 315 diff. Going back to the suspension, I did poly bush the entire car. So the subframe mounting points and the trailing arms are all poly bushed. My, my lollipop bush in the front is also poly bushed. I left stock bushes in the diff uh, because I feel like they're the ones that take all the impact. And if they're solid and hard, they, they send all the other impact to the diff and shafts. And that's why people break diffs and shafts because they poly bush their diffs. And my diff has been unpoly bushed the entire time and I haven't broken a shaft or a diff in the entire time in the entire two years of rags in this car around. I don't know if I'm just a good driver and I don't fucking put strain on my drivetrain or it's the stock bushes, but knock on wood, I haven't broken a diff or a shaft in two years. I have E34 engine mounts and strong flex uh, power poly bushes all around and the gearbox mounts are also strong flex poly bushes. I've gone through no interior, let's do interior. Fuck this engine. Stock engine. Stock engine. If you build E36, stock engine. Now we're gonna do the interior. So, uh drift car, very important. Racing seat. This is a Bride Zeta 1 uh from sometime in the 90s in Japan. I got it from Up Garage UK on Insta. I'm pretty sure he's still active and still sells seats uh, and steering wheels and stuff like that. So if you're in the UK and want some sick Jap shit, uh, our UK Up Garage, pretty good. He's actually a jokes guy as well. Uh, I got my steering wheel off him. This is a 350 mil uh, wooden Nardi. It's a little bit fucked up condition, not gonna lie. I do need to redo it. Uh, I have a Driftworks quick release hub, which is kind of a flex. Oh, let me see if I can get it out, boom. I can just take the wheel off if I'm parked in a weird spot and can't get in my seat. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And actually, it allows to put the steering wheel closer to me because I'm a bit of a tall guy. See, it's pretty far back and I like the steering wheel close to me when I'm driving. So yeah, this just helps to bring it out. I have the Lockwood clocks. They're the white ones. They're off a 328. So it actually works really well with the engine, obviously. Some CD shit. This car had some weird OBC situation that I gutted and put my old the, the clocks out of my old 316. eBay dildo shift knob. Also, the 325 I bought, which I'm still yet to show you guys, had this non-armrest ashtray delete center console. And that's the exact console I've been looking for for this car for fucking years. So I just swapped it out because this had a ashtray armrest console that I switched out. Handbrake doesn't work. You sort out the actual shoes on the handbrake so that I can use the stock handbrake because I know that they work. Chelsea Denofa, man, he's the genius, he knows. Stock handbrake, just make it work. Put nice shoes, tighten it up, service it, and you're good. Next thing I wanna show you, full interior, show, show the back, all right? We've got full interior, rear seats, fucking fire extinguisher mounted with zip ties for, for the tracks that require it. Stock passenger seat, stock doors, stock windows. It's like a normal road car, 
that's just been modified heavily to perform well as a drift car. So yeah, next we'll do visuals. We can we can talk about that. So let's do visuals outside now. So this is a Moss Customs drag style wing for the boot. Huxley roof wing. Uh, and then the tail lights, I don't even know. I think I found them on Marketplace or eBay or something like that. They're just tinted, pinstriped. They work well with the black paint uh, and they're kind of cool in aftermarket. They're a bit annoying to fit bulbs to, so half my tail lights don't work and it's annoying. Uh, but anyway, whatever. Oh yeah, stock exhaust by the way, as well, I forgot to say, completely stock system. I think the cats have been gutted out, but other than that, stock silencers, stock back box from a 328. You don't need anything else for an E36. They become raspy and loud and annoying. This, cosmetics. Tasteful, tasteful. Wall tap, okay? I wall tap uh, Option Drift 350Z at the last drift event. My aero is essentially just stock BMW bumpers and stock BMW bits cut up and screwed on. A normal SE rear bumper that I cut at some point along it and just mounted it lower down on itself and painted it a different color. It's primer gray. I have a color in mind. E46 side skirts mounted with one zip tie in the front and one zip tie in the back. This front lip, it looks like AC Schnitzer kind of lip, but it is just a normal stock bumper piece, just cut up from here, flipped upside down and just bolted on. It's nothing special. The arrow in this car is just generic shit that pretty much anyone can do with stock BMW bumpers. Um, I have the single wiper delete. I've got the stock mirror still. Oh yeah, can we, please, can we talk about how this is a factory Cosmo Schwartz 316i slick top coupe like how sick is my shell I don't really know what else there is for me to go over on this car anything that I'm forgetting it's basically a stock ass BMW that's just been reinforced suspension wise and power wise to be more fit for drifting it's still dailyable it's a little clunky and uncomfortable to drive around town because the suspension's hard but it's it's a perfectly reliable car i drive it to all the drift days i drive it back i even crash it at some of the drift days and i still drive it back that's pretty much i think for for uk yeah i don't really see the point in building any other car for truth because unless you're competing you know but if you're just doing it for fun like grassroots E36 with a 28, world of diff, all you need. Basically, this car at the moment is like the best it's ever driven, the best I've been at driving, and the best it's ever looked. But I have plans and I have ideas to make it better and to become a better driver. Probably looking at getting us getting some space to work on cars. All right, well, so this is how this thing sits now. <laughs> um, the video you just watched was probably about uh maybe two or three months ago the car has been through a lot um like a few drift days and a lot of bad owner decisions um mismatched wheels flat tires crashed broken um the main issue and the reason i'm not driving it and the way it's the reason it's fucked up is this which the rear windshield is smashed unlucky on my part or someone hates me i don't know um and also in here I don't have the key, so I can't even show you, but the fucking, the head gasket is basically blown up. The entire engine bay is covered in like creamy sludge. Uh, and the car was overheating the entire time from coming back from a drift event. Um, so yeah, this car for now is on the back burner, but this will be the sexiest E36 you will see in your life when I'm done with it in like seven years. Uh, which will mean that I actually have time uh, and the capability to really make this car good and all my other cars, which I still haven't even shown you guys half the shit I have. If you don't follow my Instagram, at v 300 gse you'll get a lot of content from all the drift days and like random photos I take of the cars. All right, well, so this is how this thing sits now. <laughs> the video you just watched was probably about maybe two or three months ago. The car has been through a lot, um, like a few drift days and a lot of bad owner decisions. Mismatched wheels, flat tires, crashed broken the main issue and the reason i'm not driving it and the way it's the reason it's fucked up is this which the rear windshield is smashed unlucky on my part or someone hates me i don't know and also in here 
I don't have the key, so I can't even show you, but the head gasket is basically blown up. The entire engine bay is covered in like creamy sludge. Uh, and the car was overheating the entire time from coming back from a drift event. Um, so yeah, this car for now is on the back burner, but this will be the sexiest E36 you will see in your life when I'm done with it in like seven years. This is my official YouTuber style video. Tell me if you guys liked it, yeah? Tell me what you think of the car, follow my Insta. Uh, thanks Don for filming and I'll see you lot later on, innit?